do well uh, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by his grace, by his tawfiq, by his guidance. And also, inshallah, I'm pretty sure that my brothers and sisters, inshallah, uh, if they got something and they still missing something or they got confused, inshallah, they will ask any question, inshallah, they need. So we are talking basically about the tafsir of the Quran about the knowledge of the tafsir, the science of tafsir. It's knowledge by itself to know the explanation of the Quran and to know how to clarify what's not clear in the Quran. And as we mentioned, alhamdulillah, before, the importance of needing the tafsir of Quran. Actually, because of not only the meaning, yes, of course, we have, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, minhu ayatun muhkamat. Yes, of course, we have very clear verses in the Quran. So when I tell you, for, for example, Allah la ilaha illahu wal hayyul qayyum, la ta'khuduhu sinatun, wala? No. So it is clear when it comes to the meaning. You don't, need, you don't need to anyone to give you the, the explanation. But there is another type of verses. Allah, Allah said, There are some other verses are not clear. That is why it needs the people of knowledge. And one of the, the funny things that I was hearing for somebody He's claiming that he is like atheist or something like this. He does not believe that Quran needs knowledge or he does not believe that hadith and the biography of the prophet, the tafsir of the Quran, the oneness of Allah. He does not believe that all of these subjects are signs. But he said anyone can read whatever he wants then let him understand the Quran just according to his wishes, according to his desire. And we don't need to any of the scholars, to any of the signs of a hadith, to any of the hadith of Rasulullah, just we stick with the Quran. And if you remember, I explained that type of people at the first lecture when we talked about the types of the tafsir, what we call them al Quraniyun those people who just stick with the Quran and they deny the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Again, we are in a, in a bad need to know the tafsir of the Quran, but we have certain verses of the Quran, certain verses of the Quran. It has the rules. It has the Sharia, the laws itself. So you cannot say, okay, I am the one who will extract the rules of the Quran from these verses. Because you don't have the tools. SubhanAllah, we believe that everything has to have specialists, except when it comes to the deen of Allah. Especially when it comes to the religion of Allah, we think, okay, that anyone can do whatever he wants. So if you, want, if you want somebody to put tiles for you in your house, you need a specialist, okay? If you need to eat good shrimp, you need to go to a good restaurant or to visit brother Abdel Basit, for example, okay? So, <laughs> so that is something. Uh, if you need to eat like grill and good meat, mashallah, you need to visit brother Zaf in New York, mashallah, I cannot, forget his, the grill that he made for us. So that is something, you know, so we need for every, if you, if you have pain in your stomach, you need to visit the doctor. If you have something, if you have depression, you will visit the, 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 the psychological, the, the, the psychiatrist or the doctor for psychology. So that is, that is something we need to understand. When it comes to the Deen of Allah, now, we have 1.8 billion Muslims and 1.8 billion Mufti. Yeah. When it comes to the deen, anyone. What do you think, brother? You know, it's halal, halal. No problem. Do it. Who are you? No problem. No. You, do you have the tools? 
No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran about the Quran. Listen to this. Bal huwa ayatun bayinatun fi sudur alladhina utu al-ilm. I need you to just to get that kind of academic differentiation. When Allah talked about Quran, he said some verses are clear and some are not. You got it? When he spoke about the people of knowledge, he said, you will find the whole Quran clear in their chests because of the knowledge that they got. So what was unclear in the Quran, you will find it clear where? In the chests. Allah said, fi suduri, in the chests. Alladhina utu al-ilm. In the chests of the people who have knowledge. So Allah called it knowledge and he assigned people to get that knowledge. And that's why we will figure it out tonight, inshallah. And we will realize how that knowledge started. And alhamdulillah, we gave the types of tafsir. We mentioned that we have two major types. I wish that you didn't, you didn't forget the expression. Maybe Auntie Maryam still remember. So we have two major types. Do you still remember? Huh? Do you still remember the two major types of tafsir? We said that we have ta tafsir al-ma'thur. Al-ma'thur means the, the tafsir was transmitted, was transferred to us. We received that tafsir. That's the first type, the first major type. The second type is tafsirun bir ra'yi. Tafsir with opinion, with the opinion of the scholar, depending on his rational thinking, the independent thinking, and his own thoughts. So that is what we call it, the tafsir by his opinion. We didn't, we didn't come to that branch or that type yet, but still we are talking about tafsir al-ma'thur, the tafsir that we received we got and we mentioned in that type we have four kinds the first one is tafsirul quran using using the quran then tafsirul quran using the sunnah of rasulullah then tafsirul quran using the statements of the companions of the prophet muhammad and we reach to the fourth type which is Tafsir al-Qur'an using the statements of the followers, the successors, at-tabi'een, the generation of the, who came after the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So are you ready? Are you ready, inshallah? So let's start. Let's start. And please, if there is something, just you got confused, if there is something wasn't clear, just let me, let me repeat it. When it comes to the tabi'in, who is the tabi'i? What does it mean? We need to know the definition of the tabi'i, the follower, the successor. If you said the generation who came after the companions, that will include the disbelievers too. So you can have a kafir, and at the same time he is tabi'i, according to your definition. But we have to put certain limits to identify exactly who is the tabi'i, who is the follower. The tabi'i is the one who became Muslim. Number two, he saw the companions of Rasulullah or some of them, or at least one of them. Number three, he spent like time from the Sahaba while he is like watching and seeing them. Number four, he died as a Muslim. You got these four conditions to call somebody tabi'i because it's a rank. It's a rank. It's higher rank in Islam. It is a position in Islam. If you call somebody is tabi'i, it has certain you know, requirements, certain qualifications, certain steps 
that you are going to follow the tabi'i, that you are going to follow after you assign somebody is a tabi'i, it's another story. It's another story. So when you, when you call somebody tabi'i, he has to be a Muslim, he has to witness the time of the Sahaba and see them and attend with some time with them. Okay, we, we spell it as tabi'in, T-A-B, T-A-B-E-E-N. Okay, tabi'in. Tabi'in, the successors, the followers. Sister Brenda Squares asking about the spelling. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her. Allahumma amin ya rabbal alameen. So now the tabi'i, he got something in the Quran. And Allah praised the tabi'in. Allah praised the generation of the successors, the followers of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praised them. We mentioned the hadith of Rasulullah. I wish if you still remember it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, خَيْرُ الْقُرُونِ قَرْنِ خَيْرُ الْقُرُونِ قَرْنِ The best generation ever is my generation. Then he said, ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ Then those who will come after. ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ Then those who will come after them. Then he said, ثُمَّ الْأَمْثَلْ فَالْأَمْثَلْ فَالْأَمْثَلْ Then the rest of people will follow them. They will join them. They will be good. They will be, you know, uh, true believers. So when it comes to the, the generation of the tabi'in, it has certain status in Islam. And not only this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the tabi'in in the Quran. When Allah said, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُمْ Allah said, those people, the early Muslims, the foremost Muslims who came first from the Muhajirin and Ansar, from those people who migrated from Mecca to Medina and the supporters of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Al Medina, those two groups, Muhajirin and Ansar, then he said, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُمْ Those people who followed them means the tabi'een. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said something strange in, in this verse. It will attract your mind. When Allah said, muhajireen and ansar, the migrators, the emigrants, and ansar, the supporters of Rasulullah, he, he didn't put any condition to accept them. You accept them all. But now the question, Shall we accept all the tabi'in? Shall we take the tafsir and the hadith from everyone called the tabi'i? No. Because Allah put limits. He put condition here. Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ What does it mean? Those who followed the Sahaba and they did righteously and they had ihsan in their relationship with Allah. Those people who followed the Sahaba, who came after the Sahaba and they were pious, they were righteous. So don't take from anyone from the Tabi'in except those people who were righteous. So now, how could I know that that man was righteous, was a good person? That is why we have now a new knowledge, a new science. It is called Rijal, the science of men. What does it mean? Tracking the biography of the tabi'in, tracking their biography, tracking 
their history, the, the, the back, their background, tracking their, where, when, when they board, when they board, tracking their uh, reputation, tracking their relationship with others. That is why it is a special knowledge, has lots of books. If you need to be, you know, qualified in hadith, you have to take that knowledge to study. They studied. Can you imagine? Because when I'm telling the brothers, we have oceans and oceans of knowledge in Islam. They do not believe me. Just I need you to imagine. They tracked every tabi'i, his life, what he did, what he missed, his statements. They analyzed every you know, step, every situation in his life. They tracked everyone that to judge, to say if we will accept his narration or not, because Allah put that condition in the Quran, that tabi'i, that follower has to be, has to practice ihsan, Allah pleased with those people who will who came after the companions, but with one condition. They have to do ihsan. That is why we had that knowledge appeared, that science appeared. So we accept from the tabi'in with condition. So we have to study them. So why we need the tabi'in? Why we need the tafsir for tabi'in? Listen to this. As we agreed last time, if you remember, and inshallah you remember, that when you are searching about any meaning for the Quran, what is the first source that you run for? If there is something in the Quran that you cannot understand, you will search in the Quran itself about the meaning. That is tafsir al-Quran ibn quran But if you didn't find it in the Quran, what is the second source? The hadith, the sunnah of Rasulullah. But what about if you didn't find in hadith? Then the Sahaba, you would go back to the statements of the Sahaba. See how Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, and we mentioned a bunch of the names, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar, Sayyidina Ubayy ibn Ka'b, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. We mentioned a bunch of Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan has his own statements when it comes to the tafsir of the Quran. But what about if you did not find this particular verse? Maybe, maybe the Quran did not explain. Maybe the Quran, Rasulullah did not explain because it was clear at his time. Maybe the Sahaba didn't ask Rasulullah. Remember, they are the people of knowledge. So if you have a, a word that even I speak Arabic, it is my mother tongue, but sometimes in some verses, some words in the Quran, I cannot get it by myself. I have to go back to the tafsir. So maybe some of these words, the Sahaba understood and they didn't want Rasulullah to explain. It was clear for them. The same happened during the time of the Tabi'in. The Tabi'in, that time, Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, you remember, during his time, he expanded. The Muslim area expanded. So, for example, that was the, the time for the conquest of Egypt. You have lots of people from the Christianity and from Judaism converted to Islam. You have lots of non-Arabs who started to enter to Islam. So when they read, sometimes the normal word, which was clear for the Sahaba, but it, it's not clear for them. So they started to ask the Sahaba. And now it was the first time to have the Islamic schools for tafsir during the time of Tabi'in. 
That is the beginning. That is how it started. Let me give you some of the, the leaders, the principles for these schools. For example, in Mecca, you have Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma. Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas was the scholar and people used to come to Mecca. They, they need to ask about the tafsir of the Quran and they are tabi'in. The tabi'in, they attended the time of the Sahaba, but that was, but they didn't see Rasulullah. The, the Sahabi, the one who saw Rasulullah, but the Tabi'een, those who came after the death of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or they converted after the death, because sometimes you may have a person who saw Rasulullah, but he wasn't a Muslim at, the, at that time. You know, he converted after the death of Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you have Abdullah ibn Abbas Radiallahu Alaihi Wasallam started his own halaqa, his own gathering. So he started to teach the tafsir. You have Sayyiduna Ubay ibn Ka'b. Ubay ibn Ka'b. You know, you, you remember that name? One of the great scholars when it comes to the Quran. He was one of the writers of the revelation. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wallahi, every time I mentioned that name, Ubay ibn Ka'b, I feel something in my heart. I feel that I felt his heart. I feel that I touched his emotions and his tears. Sayyidina Ubay ibn Ka'b, I need you. That's a very remarkable name in our Islamic history. One day, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called him and he came. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Ubay, you know Ubay, one of the writers of the revelation, whenever Sayyidina Jibreel comes and he recites some of the verses to Rasulullah, whenever he finishes, Rasulullah used to call Sayyidina Ubay, Sayyidina Ali, all the writers. So he called Ubay one day. And he said, Ya Ubay, Inna Allaha Amarani An Akra'a Alayka Surat Al Bayina. Allah had ordered me to recite Surat Al Bayina for you. And before Rasulullah recites, he said, Ya Rasulullah, please hold on. Asamani Rabbi, did Allah mention my name? Did Allah said to you, Ubay ibn Ka'b, Asamani ya Rabbi? He said, yes. Then he kept three days crying and walking in the streets of Medina, shouting and saying, Ana ladhi samani ya Rabbi. I am the one that Allah mentioned his name. Look at, look at Sayyidina Ubay ibn Ka'b. I'm talking about a person that we need to, um, to memorize his name. Sayyidina Abay ibn Ka'b, just, I, I wanted to mention that story with Rasulullah He had his own school in Al-Madinah. So Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas in Mecca, Sayyidina Abay ibn Ka'b in Al-Madinah. And then we have Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, where? In Baghdad, in Al-Iraq. So he started to have his own classes and his own students. And now we have the generation of at tabiin Let me give you some of the names. We have Sayyiduna Sa'id ibn Jubair, Ata ibn Abi Rabah, Ikrima, Qatada, Mujahid, Zaid ibn Aslam. Just some of the names to be aware of them. Again, Sa'id ibn Jubair, Ata ibn Abi Rabah, Ikrima, Qatada, Mujahid, Zaid ibn Aslam. Many times in the tafsir, when you read tafsir ibn Kathir, when you read tafsir al-Qurtubi, for example, you will find this statement, Wa qala Mujahid. 
and Mujahid said, وَقَالَ قَتَادَ and Qatada said, وَقَالَ Ikrima and Ikrima said, now you will figure it out, that these names are the names of At-Tabi'een, the successors. You got it? Okay. Let's move to the, the other point. Is that enough for tonight? Do you think that Dr. Yusuf, is that enough? Yes, I know. I know you, you, yeah, you say the truth. It's enough. <laughs> okay, inshallah. Just uh, I will finish by this and we will, inshallah, continue next time. The Tabi'een, the, the period of Tabi'een was so long. And we have many, like thousands of the Tabi'een. So how could we figure them? If we said that we need to analyze them, what's the science of this? Do you remember? What is the science that he was analyzing everyone, his biography, what we call? Ismu, ismu, it is called, again, rijal. You know, ilm, science, or knowledge. Al-Rijal, it's a plural word for man. Man, men, so man, rajul, men, rijal. It is called ilmur rijal, the science of analyzing the life of the men, the, 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 the successors, and even who came after the successors. It's, it's, it's very, very good science and mashallah, it's very uh, like hard to and tough to deal with. It's not easy. So I, we remember when we were analyzing the hadith, how to judge for the hadith, for example, if it is authentic or not, how to judge. They will give you the text and the chain of the transmission. The chain of the transmission has almost like 30, 35 names of the companions and the followers and the followers of the followers, you know? So you have to analyze each and every one of them by drawing a tree. So you have the root who said the hadith. Then he transmitted that hadith for, for how many people? So everyone has his own branch and the branch has leaves and the leaves have the, the, the dates and the, the names when he died. So let me, let me just give you an example. Uh, I don't know, I, I have heard that name, Baba, for example, the father of Brother Faisal, okay? He passed away. May Allah shower him with his mercy. Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I heard his name, Baba. So if I said that I have hadith, I got it from Baba, okay? So would you believe me? Would you believe me? No. Because that man died before I come. So how, how did I meet him? How did I meet him? So maybe, maybe he, come to, he came to Egypt. So they will analyze his life. Did he travel to Egypt? No. So maybe Imam Ahmad met him in New York when he was there 2017. But he didn't travel 2017 to New York. Maybe when he came to Michigan 2016, he met them, he met him in, in, in Michigan. No, he didn't travel. So that man is a liar because he is claiming that he got this hadith from Baba while he didn't meet him. So it, it is impossible that he called him in, in the cell phone or on Zoom. It wasn't at that time. So this, this is the, the science. This is the knowledge. It is called so they, they have to submit, they have to admit everyone. They have to submit everyone to that analyzation, to that analysis. So he has, they need to study. They need to know where he died, where he born, where he traveled. It's, it's knowledge by itself. Okay. So now let, let's, let's assume that we have 10 of the tabi'in and we are analyzing them. So we have 10 people, just small scale, so we can understand the idea. Three of them, we found they are so strong in memorization and mashallah, 
very eloquent and they have good relationship with Allah and mashallah they are trustworthy they have good reputation so we will classify them as the best of the tabi'i okay then the other three they were good but not like the first group so we will call them the middle class the middle class of the tabi'i okay then we have the rest which are four they were very weak and we when we analyzed them, their their biography we found sometimes they forget sometimes they they had bad reputation some of them was cheating some of them had uh, like in his merchandise for example in his trading selling and buying he had bad reputation some one of them uh, said something was contradicting the quran some of them said something contradicted the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu some some of them claimed that he got the hadith or the tafsir from abdullah ibn mas'ud and when we analyzed his life we discovered that he didn't travel to baghdad you know that so we call them the very weak class so we will classify inshallah the tabi'in to three levels the very strong then the middle class then the very weak class so now if you got some of these names when you read by yourself that's why these are the tools for the student of knowledge if i give you some of the names like for example saeed ibn jubair which which class that he was belonged to first class saeed ibn jubair one of the things I was talking with my wife about Saeed ibn Jubair. <laughs> Saeed ibn Jubair was a great scholar. And one day he was looking for someone to marry uh, his daughter. So can you imagine the daughter of Saeed ibn Jubair? Can you imagine? She is alima. She is a scholar. Masha'Allah. The wife of the, the daughter of Saeed ibn Jubair. So Saeed ibn Jubair found one of his students and he was very poor. You, you know, one of his students and he chose him to be the husband, the son of the son-in-law. So after long discussion, he said, are you making fun of me? I'm your student, I'm very poor. So how could I marry your daughter? He said, don't, don't worry, don't worry. I agree and Allah said, take the one who, who has taqwa. So in the wedding night, in the wedding night, the man, after he spent the night with his wife, the daughter of Saeed ibn, ibn, ibn Jubay, Saeed ibn Musayyib, so he, she, he called her, you know what, let me go after Fajr, so I will join the class of your father. Because I need to learn from your father i'm his student so what she said to him Ejlis huna ilma sa'id. sit with me stay with me i will teach you the whole knowledge of sa'id of your scholar of my father so she is she has the knowledge even more than her father Ejlis huna stay with me and I will give you all the knowledge of Saeed, her father. So if Saeed was his sheikh, so what about his wife? Again, now we are talking about the husband. If her father was his sheikh, so what about his wife, his daughter, the daughter of Saeed? She will be the sheikh of his shaykh, subhanallah. Just think about those people. And nowadays, subhanallah, we have everything, mashallah, easy. They spent all their life so dedicated for the knowledge because it is con connecting them
to Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sa'id ibn Musayyib, one of the great followers, and also Sa'id ibn Jubayr was one of the great scholars in tafsir. When we talk about Qatada, when we talk about Mujahid, we are talking about the first class people. Inshallah, we are going to know more next time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. Allahumma ameen, ya rabbal alameen. And again, forgive me, please, if there is something too hard, but as I, as I promised you, it, 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 it's not my fault, but as I promised you, it's not easy to handle because it's academic course, but inshallah, I'm pretty sure that you will forgive me. Jazakumullahu khaira. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. Allahumma ameen. And by the way, I noticed, mashallah, that we have Dr. Siddiqui, mashallah, joined us. Uh, I, we missed you, doctor. I was about to call you today. I got busy with many things to check on you, but alhamdulillah, I'm so happy that uh, we, we see you again. Yes, doctor. Yeah, we have lots. That's a good question, mashallah. I know that you are supporting the feminist, mashallah. <laughs> alhamdulillah. You know what? He asked the question. We mentioned names of men. Do we have names of women too? Yes, inshallah. I promise you. That next time, I will mention to you many of the names for women that you cannot imagine their contribution in our Islamic history, in the Islamic knowledge. And we mentioned Sayyidah Aisha, the great, the, our mother. And but when it comes to the field of knowledge, one of the greatest, you know, scholars in the knowledge of Quran and the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins, ya Rabbil Alameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts for his guidance. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in knowledge. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us barakah in this knowledge. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the light for the, of the people of knowledge in the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us the intercession of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give cure and heal for everyone is sick, ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give shifa for everyone needs and for everyone is suffering. Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah forgive our sins, the minor sins and the major sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us all be in Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah guide all our steps to Jannatul Firdaus. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ameen, Ameen. Wa salli Allahumma wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.